a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Lemony Snicket Bibliography This is a list of books by Lemony Snicket, the pen name of American author Daniel Handler. Works published under the name Daniel Handler are not included. Snicket has published 26 fiction novels, 13 in the main A series of Unfortunate Events franchise. His works have been translated into more than 40 languages, and have sold more than 65 million copies. A Series of Unfortunate Events A Series of Unfortunate Events is a series of children's novels which follows the turbulent lives of Violet, Klaus, and Sonny Baudelaire after their parents' death in an arsonous house fire. The children are placed in the custody of their distant cousin Count Olof who begins to abuse them and openly plots to embezzle their inheritance. After the Baudelaire removed from his care by their parents' estate executor, Arthur Poe, Olaf begins to doggedly hunt the children down, bringing about the serial slaughter and holocaust of a multitude of characters. The entire series is actively narrated by Snicket, who makes numerous references to his mysterious, deceased love interest, Beatrice. Both Snicket and Beatrice play roles in the story along with Snicket's family members, all of whom are part of an overarching conspiracy known to the children only as VFD. Since the release of the first novel, The Bad Beginning, the books have gained significant popularity, critical acclaim, and commercial success worldwide, spawning a film, video game, and assorted merchandise. The 13 books in the series have collectively sold more than 65 million copies and have been translated into 41 languages. The Bad Beginning The Bad Beginning is the first novel in a series of unfortunate events. After the Baudelaire children learn their parents have died in a mansion fire, their banker Arthur Poe puts the Baudelaire in the custody of their distant cousin Count Olaf. Olaf neglects, abuses, and openly plots to embezzle the orphans with the help of his theatre troupe. He orders the children to take part in his troupe's performance of The Marvelous Marriage, Violet as the Bride. Klaus learns from a legal book lent by their kindly neighbor, Justice Strauss, that if Olaf marries Violet, he will have access to their inheritance. When he confronts Olaf, the Count traps Sunny in a birdcage and threatens her life if the children do not cooperate. On the night of the performance, Strauss plays the part of the judge, unwittingly officiating over a real marriage. When the performance is over, Olaf releases Sonny, but the orphans reveal his plot to Strauss, who annuls the marriage on a technicality, and to Poe, who arrests Olaf. The Count and his troop escape, and promise to steal the Baudelaire fortune and kill them. Strauss offers to take custody of the children. But Poe explains that their parents will specify only relatives as guardians. The Reptile Room The Reptile Room is the second novel in a series of unfortunate events. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are sent to live with their distant in-law, the herpetologist Dr. Monty Montgomery. Monty's profession involves traveling to exotic locations and cataloging new species of reptiles. His most recent find is the incredibly deadly viper, a large and intelligent, but harmless snake. Monty's assistant, Gustav Zabald, has disappeared, and in time for an expedition to Peru, the herpetologist's new assistant Stefano arrives. The Baudelaire try to warn Monty, but, when the herpetologist finally begins to suspect Stefano, he is murdered with the venom of one of his own snakes. Olaf plans to take the children to Peru, but the children's banker, Arthur Poe, arrives and learns of Monty's death. Olaf, still disguised as Stefano, convinces Poe that one of the snakes must have killed the herpetologist. Unable to convince Poe that Stefano is Olaf, Violet searches through the Count's belongings for evidence while Sonny and Klaus pretend to be attacked by the incredibly deadly Viper. When Violet finds a syringe of snake venom, Olaf escapes before Poe can arrest him. The Wide Window The Wide Window is the third novel in a series of unfortunate events. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are sent to live with their distant relative Josephine Ann Whistle, a widow who lives on a cliff over Lake Lacrimos. Josephine whose husband Ike was eaten by the leeches of Lake Lacrimos, has numerous phobias which include seemingly everything but the lake, which can be seen through a large window in her library. When word of a hurricane reaches the town, Josephine goes to buy provisions in town, where she meets Captain Julio Sham, 
who is actually Count Olaf's disguise. When Josephine returns, the Baudelaire hear the library window shatter and discover a suicide note from Josephine leaving them in Sham's custody. Arthur Poe arrives and begins work with Olaf on the custody papers while waiting in the house. The children discover the message, Curdled Cave, hidden in a suicide note. The orphans find the cave on a map of the lake, but are forced to flee when the hurricane destroys Josephine's house. Stealing one of Sham's rental boats, the Baudelaire head through the hurricane to the cave, where Josephine in hiding. The widow explains that Olaf threatened her life if she did not give him the children, but the Baudelaire force her return with them as evidence. For Poe, on the way they are intercepted by Olaf who takes them aboard his boat and pushes Josephine into the lake, where she is eaten by the leeches. Nonetheless, the Baudelaire convinced Poe that Sham is Olaf. The Count escapes once again. The Miserable Mill The Miserable Mill is the fourth novel in a series of unfortunate events. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are sent to live with Sir, the co-owner of a lumber company. Unbeknownst to Mr. Poe, they are forced to work unpaid in the mill where they befriend the optimistic worker Phil, and the company's other co-owner, Charles. The lumber mill's unscrupulous foreman, Flacutono, breaks Klaus' glasses. When Klaus returns, from the optometrist, he behaves strangely for some time. When Klaus' glasses are broken again, the children together visit the optometrist, a Dr. Georgina Orwell, only to find that she is a hypnotist working with Count Olof who is disguised as her receptionist Shirley Sinoit Pecker. Olaf plans to coerce the hypnotic Klaus into murdering Charles, after which he will offer to become the children's guardian, and relieve Sir of the burden. The plan is foiled by Violet, who discovers how to unhypnotize her brother, and in the process or will is guild. But Sir still wishes to relinquish custody to Shirley. Poe arrives, and learning that the children have been forced to work, he removes Sir's custody. The children convince Bo that Shirley is Olaf, but the Count escapes with Flacutono, who was one of his associates in disguise. Poe explains that he cannot keep finding new guardians for the children, and that they will have to attend boarding school. The Austere Academy The Austere Academy is the fifth novel in a series of unfortunate events. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are sent to Proof Rock Preparatory School an academy overseen by the tyrannic vice-principal Nero. While treated poorly and confined to a shack outside the dormitories, the children befriend fellow students and triplets Duncan and Isadora Quagmire, who lost their brother and parents in a fire similar to the Baudelaire. All five children are persistently taunted by their obnoxious classmate Carmelita Spatz. When the Quagmires learn of the Baudelaire troubles and note the similarity of their plights, the triplets begin to research Count Olaf in the school library's records. Olaf soon arrives disguised as Genghis, the school's new gym teacher. He begins the aptly names, special orphan running exercises, for the Baudelaire, forcing them to spend every night running laps out on the field. Unable to stay awake during the day, the children begin failing their classes. Finally Nero announces that if they do not each pass a special exam, they will be expelled and placed in private tutoring with Genghis. On the night before the exams, the Quagmires disguise themselves as the Baudelaire and take their places for SORE leaving Violet, Klaus, and Sunny to study for their exams. The next morning Poe arrives and the children pass their exams. When they convince Poe that Genghis is Olaf, the Count escapes to Black Car, driven by two of his associates, and the Baudelaire see that he has kidnapped the Quagmires. Duncan tries to tell the Baudelaire secret he and his sister have discovered about Count Olaf, but all the children can hear is, VFD. The Azatz Elevator The Azatz Elevator is the sixth novel in a series of unfortunate events. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are sent to live with Jerome and Esme Esquala, a wealthy couple who live in the penthouse of a 66-story apartment complex in the city. While Jerome is kindly toward the orphans, Esme is obsessed with fashion and constantly occupied in her collaboration with a man named Gunther on a fashion auction known as the Inn Auction. When the children finally meet Gunther, they realize he is Count Olaf in disguise. When Olaf leaves the apartment complex without passing the doorman, the orphans search for a secret exit and discover that there is an extra elevator door on the 66th floor which leads to an empty elevator shaft. The children make a rope 
and lower themselves down until they reach a room in which they find Duncan and Isadora Quagmire trapped in a cage. The Baudelaire climb back up the shaft to find a means of rescue for Quagmires, but when they return the triplets are gone. The children return, and find Esme, who tells them she is working with Olaf, then pushes them into the shaft, where they are caught in a net. Sunny climbs the shaft using her teeth and retrieves the rope, then the children climb down to the bottom where they discover a tunnel which leads to a secret door in the ruins of their former home. The children head to the inn auction to find Olaf and Esme. At the auction they find Mr. Poe and Jerome. The children expose Olaf and Esme, and to Jerome's dismay, the Count announces Esme as his girlfriend, then the two villains escape. Jerome announces he will take the orphans far away from their troubles, but the Baudelaire are unwilling to desert the Quagmires. Jerome relinquishes his custody back to Poe and leaves the children. The Vile Village The Vile Village is the seventh novel in a series of unfortunate events. The Baudelaire sent to a village called VFD. They believe it has something to do with the secret the Quagmire triplets mentioned before they were kidnapped. The Baudelaire treated cruelly by the villagers, but their guardian Hector is nice, if a bit skittish. The children find couplets once a day, and think the quagmires are trying to communicate with them. The people in the village find someone with a unibrow and a knight or two on his ankle like Count Olaf has, but the children know it is not Count Olaf. The townsfolk decide to execute him, but the day before his execution, the suspect has been murdered, and Count Olaf blames the children. The children are arrested. They manage to escape the jail and find the quagmires, having found the hidden message in Isadora's couplets. The quagmires escape with Hector in a hot air balloon built by Hector, but the children are forced to flee the town. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?